It's Friday night in Beijing and the rich young things have come out to play. In the 1970s, you could be killed here by a mob for showing outward displays of wealth. Now barely legal drivers can be seen behind the wheels of $600,000 sports cars. Within 10 years, half the world's billionaires will come from China. While other countries are in panic mode over their stagnant economies, here they're making money and they're flaunting it. Wealthy people in China love their private clubs, and the young rich are no different. To be a member of this establishment, there's a simple requirement. All you have to do is own a Porsche 911 or something even flashier. This is the Beijing Sports Car Club in Chaoyang's Bar District. The night we visit is a kind of decadent palace theme party. The members are mostly 20-something year old men and the young maidens, well they just kind of appeared at one stage. Chinese people refer to those moving in these circles as the Fuar Dai, the children of those who got rich when China suddenly opened up in the 1980s. Whether it's fair or not, they're seen as the first generation who've known nothing but wealth their entire short lives. Across town, their parents' generation living it up their own way. The millionaire level, which is, say, let's say, British pound millionaires, we estimate there's 960,000 of them, which has been growing about 10% or more over the last five years. Um, if you look at the billionaire level, US dollar billionaires, um, we estimate there's 600 now. Rupert Hoogeworth makes his living by observing China's mega wealthy class to produce the Huan Report Rich List. Many Chinese people say their bosses have made it big on the back of corrupt deals following market reforms in the 1980s. But this self-styled wealth tracker says the country has become number one in terms of what he says are self-made billionaires. What's more, they're getting richer and richer. I was with an entrepreneur last week who was explaining that it all goes to plan within 10 years' time, he's going to be 10 times the size he is today. Now, of course, there's an element of I want to challenge myself as well. Um, but certainly these people, you need to be aware of them and we need to understand this group. According to the Huan Report's research, the typical Chinese billionaire is a 51-year-old man. His child is just out of university. He lives in Beijing. The typical millionaire is only 41 years old, lives in Shanghai or nearby provinces, and is planning to send his 10-year-old child to university in Australia, Canada, Britain or the United States. I'm looking forward to our skiing holiday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These are the people who are going to rule the world, aren't they? Well, they're very young still, and they're growing very fast. And so if you look at the Bill Gates of this world who are well into their 60s and the Buffets who are well into their 80s even, and these Chinese entrepreneurs are still in their 40s, possibly their 50s, well, they've got another 30 years to go where they're going to end up. And according to this rich list, the top way for these people to make money is real estate. This 
this hotel has just been built in 14 days. Yes, you heard it right. Work went on around the clock and the seemingly unthinkable pace of construction was achieved by using pre-made steel frames which were placed in like massive blocks. So now in the middle of nowhere in central China's Hunan province, they have their own tower. If I was standing in this exact location just two weeks ago, I'd be on the ground surrounded by vegetable gardens. Now I'm on top of a 30-storey hotel. And I've got to say, it's pretty surreal. The man behind this project is the rather eccentric and very successful businessman Zhang Yue. With workers still putting the finishing touches on his high-speed hotel, He's already giving potential business partners a tour of the site. Zhang Yue is marketing this as a cheap and, he says, eco-friendly alternative to traditional building methods. Zhang Yue's company is called Broad, and we're taken on a tour of the headquarters known as Broad Town. This is not your average factory complex. The grounds include a massive replica of a French chateau designed by Zhang Yue's wife, and a giant gold pyramid which is apparently going to be used as a museum to introduce visitors to the philosophy of Chairman Zhang Yue. He invented all the products of Broad Group and he's a key engineer for all the designings and uh, he's an inspirational person. Everyone around him learned a lot from him. Zhang Yue's personal fortune of an estimated $850 million originally came from making diesel and gas-powered air conditioners. These days, he presents himself as a Buddhist green businessman on a mission. He says he never uses a computer. Money may mean nothing to Zhang Yue, but he looks set to make a whole lot more of it. His plan is to roll out building component factories, first across China, then other countries. And he's not short of belief in the potential of this technology, which he calls civilised construction. China's mad rush to urbanization is responsible for producing a fair swag of the country's wealthy elite. Infrastructure, iron and steel have been big earners. And anyone who makes anything to do with homes and offices remains in the box seat. In the capital Beijing, there's one company that's transformed the very appearance of the city. We're lucky you know, as a developer. We're talking about Beijing being built, urbanized in 15 years. Zhang Xin is the CEO of Soho China. As a teenager, she fled the Cultural Revolution to work in a Hong Kong factory. She studied in Cambridge, became an investment banker and returned to China in the 1990s 
to try her hand at property developing. She remembers the early discussions with government officials about what Beijing was going to be like. They were talking about the future. The future of the CBD will be like the Manhattan of Beijing. And I remember when I first came back to Beijing, hearing people talk about this and thinking, oh, these guys have never been to Manhattan, have no idea about what they're talking about. Uh, but, you know, seriously, when you go out today, that's exactly what's happening. And you're surrounded by these high rise, very dense buildings. And, and it feels a modern version of Manhattan. If the Beijing CBD now looks like a modern metropolis, that's in no small part because of Soho's towers. And they're not finished yet. The ambitions of this company and its boss seem to know no bounds. And perhaps this is a good metaphor for this city and even this country. The designs are becoming more striking, the locations more sought after, and the buildings, well, that is getting bigger and bigger. But even being the largest developer in Beijing has not made Zhang Xin completely satisfied with the way things are going in China. We have moved backward by having more co government-owned companies taking over, uh, and uh, you know that that you know powerful state-owned companies are managing many many industries, and and so the, to that extent is is going backward. But uh, you know I I think that uh, this if you look at the history, if you look from the historical point of view, this none of those would stop the trend of you know the the china moving forward to become a more modernized country and to be more integrated with the rest of the world yet some are hoping that it's traditional culture which will propel them to international success Zhang Lan is to restaurants what Zhang Xin is to property. She owns the South Beauty chain of Sichuan eateries. And on the opening day of her newest outlet, she gives the staff a solid rev up session. As with other Chinese entrepreneurs, her ultimate goals are certainly not modest. Zhang Lan thinks that if junk food can be swept around the world using chain stores, so can her Sichuan-style restaurants, and she's starting off by conquering China. What's more, though her vision is big, she says she's prepared to take the long view to achieve ultimate success, an attribute lacking in many businesses here. <laughs> But she can't be too critical of the fast money crowd, as the company also has some very upmarket watering holes, like Beijing's Land Bar, that are specifically designed to lighten the wallets of China's nouveau riche. This establishment is not for your average Chinese customer. There are drinks here that cost the same as a week's salary for a factory worker. But these are not the clientele that this place is aimed at. 
and it's a measure of the affluence in this town that there are no shortage of well-heeled patrons who are more than happy to come along and fill these seats. Many in China believe that their country is arriving at a powerful and privileged place. A place where international designers are flown in to create pleasure palaces like nowhere on earth. There's not a lot of communism in any of this. If you got the cash in this country, you can pretty much get whatever you want. Well, this isn't bad, is it? I'm sitting on a private jet, flying in between Beijing and Shanghai. Got my champagne and it's pretty comfortable. Now, I'm sitting here with Jean-Michel Jacob from Dassault and it's his business to sell these jets to Chinese people. So, who are you mainly selling to? What, what types of people in China? Uh, our main customers are big corporations or private individuals owning big corporations bankers, real estate, mining, and they buy their aircraft for developing their activity in China, in Asia, and throughout the world. And how hard is it to uh, be selling these jets at this moment in China? It's not that hard selling those jets today because they need them. Their market is booming here, it's booming elsewhere, they are rich, they can buy the world, they can invest everywhere, and then they need commodities, so it's rather uh, easier compared to what it is in Europe or in America nowadays. Cheers. Cheers. In China, the military controls all airspace. Until recently, this made it hard for private jets to operate. But as the space has been freed up, the mega-rich have lined up to buy. To own one of these particular planes, all you need is a spare $53 million. Then there are the running costs of around $2 million a year. The hefty price tag is not dampening sales. Three years ago we sold three aircraft Mm, this year, 2011, we sold 15 aircraft and we expect to sell much more in 2012. Afterwards, we still talk about those three engines. And these jets might well come in handy for wealthy Chinese because there's another thing about them. Surveys show that 75% of the country's super rich have either left in order to get hold of a foreign passport or are seriously considering it. This is seen as an insurance policy in case things go bad in China. Of course, if you don't have a private jet to get you out of here, there's always the pointy end of any commercial aircraft. And if the wheels fall off China's great leap into affluence, this will be the first place it hits. In Guangdong, the southern province that sees itself as the world's factory, they produce just about everything. But some see future social, political and even economic turmoil threatening it all. What then for the production lines which were once fields? The farmers who've become workers and the taxi drivers who've turned into millionaires. Thirty-four-year-old Yan Zhihui runs Jincheng Electronics with his business partner Sun Jinyong. He says he arrived in Shenzhen 13 years ago with around $150. That he drove a taxi for two years, then opened a fast food restaurant, 
and finally got enough money together to jump into manufacturing. Becoming a boss has transformed his life. Young Zhihui may see himself as middle class, but if your personal wealth is like his, between 600,000 and a million dollars, that goes a long way in southern China. Yet the world is changing, and it's possible that the good times won't last forever for China's manufacturers. Towers of Shenzhen literally sprang from nothing in recent decades to create a city which owes its wealth to China's export boom. But employees here are becoming less and less likely to work for peanuts, meaning that other countries can now undercut China in terms of production costs. So what will this mean in the long run for Shenzhen's businesses? Many Chinese factories have also been hit by collapse in demand following world financial turmoil. Yet this company sells 80% of its products domestically. More and more Chinese businesses are now pinning their hopes on the huge local market rather than an uncertain global climate. It's even thought that Chinese consumers will eventually transform the international economy by simply buying things. Well, the general consensus is that you've got another 15 years of fast growth uh, derived from this urbanization program. And if it all goes to plan, at that stage it will then remarkably slow down. And at that point, we're going to have to look for this so-called middle class who are going to start spending in China. And that will be when Chinese brands really come to the front, if you like. <laughs> Meantime, it's luxury European brands that are counting on China's super rich class to shore up their fortunes. <music> Zhang Zhen is from the east coast city of Qingdao and he's the founder of the Beijing Sports Car Club. He divides his time between his hometown and the capital, sometimes driving between the two with his mates or family members. Now, can <laughs> Zhang Zhen is very cagey about where his and his family's money has come from. He says he's an investor in the service industry. If so, he's been very successful because his collection of sports cars is worth a not-so-small fortune. What's more, this young man in his 20s says his parents have merely offered him moral support and that he's been able to earn enough himself to service his ultra-expensive pastime. Who says America is the land of capitalist dreams? Here you can get rich, show it off, and as long as you're on the right side of powerful people, nobody's going to question how you got to where you are. Hey, hey,
This may be a country of massive wealth disparity, but even the smallest percentage of mega rich individuals becomes in China a large and extremely powerful group. And with their tearaway success and big ambitions, it's a group that's going to go a very long way.